The InnoCello duplicator is a combination of functionality for both copying and deriving assemblies. We will have a look at both operations in this video and what the differences are. First up is the copy with references operation. If for some reason you simply need a copy of an assembly, this can be accomplished as follows. First, select the assembly you wish to copy from the Explorer view. Now open the Edit menu and select the Copy with References command. This will open a new dialog in which we can select where the assembly is to be copied to. Depending on the Vault configuration, Wizard Pages may be configured for a copy action, or you may simply need to select a folder in the Vault. Here, we only need to select a folder. Now that the destination has been chosen, we can select individual components of the assembly to copy. The default setting for a vault is for every document in the assembly to be copied. This is indicated by the green tick next to each document. Even the parts of subassemblies are selected for you. Before we continue this copy action, let's have a look at the copy dialog. Along the top are a number of controls. First step is the Viewer button. This will give you a viewer window of the currently selected document. Next is the Properties button. Pressing this button will give you a new dialog with the properties of the currently selected document. Now we come to the Refresh button. You can press this button to get an updated view of the assembly you have open. This is very useful if there are a number of users working on the same assembly and you need to ensure you are seeing the latest situation. The final button on the toolbar is the Options button. The options provided here help to control how the directory structure is built for the copy assembly. You can choose to build the folder structure relative to the main assembly, relative to each subassembly, or not to rebuild it at all. You can even include inventor drawing and presentation files and also update SOLIDWORKS references. Just under the toolbar is the Document View window. The assembly you are copying is shown here in a tree structure. Under the Document View window is a simplified property window. You can see some of the document's properties and a thumbnail. This information is updated when you select a different document in the tree. If we complete the copy action, we can see that the focus is now on the copy assembly. If we have a look at the assembly structure for this assembly, it is shown as a completely self-contained assembly. Assemblies that have been derived with references differ, however. Let's see how. Deriving an assembly requires practically the same steps as copying. In this case, the biggest difference is that the assembly must be released before it can be derived. However, in this example, you can see that not all components of the assembly are released. If we now attempt to derive this assembly, we are given a message telling us that the Use Original option is set for one document. Once the Derive dialog appears, you may notice that we have an extra tab compared to the Copy dialog. As the name of the tab implies, it contains a list of all the documents that cannot be derived. In some cases, this may be okay as the document is a library part and does not need to be changed for any assembly it is used in. If that is the case, the Use Original option is a good choice and nothing needs to be changed. If the document needs to be copied for the Derive action, it can be released from this tab, assuming of course that you have enough rights to do so. Now if we switch to the All Documents tab, you can see that the document we just released is still set to Use Original. If we right-click on the document, we can set it to be copied along with the rest of the document. Once again, the focus is changed to that of the derived assembly. If we now open the reference dialog for this assembly, we can see another big difference to copying assemblies. When you derive an assembly, you also create some history in the form of a reference to the original assembly. 
This allows you to keep track of where assemblies originate. This has been an overview of the InnoCello duplicator functionality. More information on this feature can be found in the InnoCello user guide. Thanks for watching.